and yes so let's get started uh, with the session uh, the session is about web driver connector for botium and she is going to talk about uh, uh, is it a tool for testing conversational ui or like how how about it so so over to shamash stage is yours thank you let me share my screen how many of you have heard about tay uh tay was a um, microsoft bot on twitter uh, released in march 2016 uh it was designed to have conversations with twitter users and learn how to mimic a human by copying their speech patterns it was supposed to engage with the people of aged between uh, 18 to 24 so let's see you know what she learned and how did she perform so she started with a very sweet hello message uh, hello world message and in few minutes she became hitler's fan and some more time after that she also uh, wanted to teach mexico a lesson by building a wall and soon after that we saw her become a racist so what actually happened right uh enough damage made she was shut down within 16 hours of her launch and trust me i've just hand picked few of the nicer quotes or nicer uh, tweets from her you can go on google and google more what happened so next uh, we'll see a cnn news bot designed to uh, give you updates news news updates right so it does not seem to be unsubscribing a user the user requested to unsubscribe it said yes i did but the next day continued to send in the alerts so what did fail bot did not understand no it did understand right it said i unsubscribed you but maybe some integration failures there in the back end another example poncho so this uh, was designed to provide an info on weather uh, for giving uh, you know weather information for a particular location so does it perform well and it does not in the first half it does not did not understand what umbrella means and in the second half when i asked how does uh, the weather look like in brooklyn new york uh, this weekend it failed to understand what does a weekend mean straightforward test cases isn't it so now let us understand how are these different from other apps right how are these different and why are they behaving differently they're self learning systems so most of the bots are built using natural language processing machine learning deep learning algorithms and all the systems are under constant training and improvement so that the tests that you are going to write today uh, with expected outcome may change in next run so having a non deterministic component in the system under test will make the software testing really useless as soon as you are not able to tell uh the failure uh the reason for the failure is a defect or as an improvement right and when using a bot either it is a voice bot or it is a text interface a chat bot uh, there is no interaction barrier for users as compared to any other traditional uh, web or mobile app so there is a ui which will have a predefined uh, you know interaction uh, defined for you how the flow should be uh you know the the links the buttons the text the forms are actually helping you to have that conversation and uh, get your job done but with bots it is really unexpected and the user is free to give inputs and start from anywhere right so the bots has to uh, handle this in a very decent way plus also the non deterministic user interactions like human language human way of texting emojis you know pics even today we have apps where you can have a personalized uh, emojis you can create a personalized emojis right think uh, about a scenario where i communicate uh, with a bot with my personalized emoji how does it understand what i'm trying to say what my mood is right and also there are tons of possibilities around phrases jargon typos local languages Uh, so the test coverage is really challenge here right 100% test coverage you're trying to make i don't think so next this is very specific to voice bots uh, so like alexa like there are around 
seven and a half billion humans out there, at least seven and a half billion. And when I say that, that means there are seven and a half billion different voices, voice textures. And uh, for a UI, if you compare, it doesn't matter who is filling in the form, who is giving the input, or who is calling that API, you know, or who is clicking on that button. But for a voice bot, it does matter what voice is an action. So before I jump, you know, uh, to how to strategize this testing, I want to just see how does it work in a nutshell so that I could understand what are the different components in the system and maybe that will help me to, you know, strategize even better. So let's have a look. So this is in a nutshell, a very high level of, uh, you know, abstract architecture that any bot would have, okay? Uh, so there would be a user input. It may come through any of the platform, either it is voice or text. In case of voice, uh, speech to text libraries are used to convert the voice to text, and we are really heavily dependent on them. And uh, once the input is received, it is uh, you know given to the N uh, NLP layer, and uh, NLP layer processes uh, the input and uh, may. Uh, in turn, talk to the databases, the internal APIs, the external APIs, and so on, right? Now, what does this NLP layer do? With NLP, what is just finding a way to convert user speech or text to a structured data, okay? Which is then utilized to choose a relevant answer. How should I respond? And what is the user's intent? In terms of this, it uh, tokenizes, that is, it is breaking all the inputs into series of words, and each piece of this is representing a different value in the application. The next it does is it does the sentiment analysis. Uh, so it will study and try to learn the user's experience, and it will transfer the inquiry to the human whenever necessary. Let us say the user is very much upset with the service or very angry, it should not be, you know, um, continuing the discussions here and there the way usually it does, but it should direct it to the sales rep or the human so that it could be handled properly, right? I not might want to annoy or irritate my user even more in that case. Then comes normalization where it will try to find the typos, the spelling mistakes, it corrects them, and it also tries to alter the indent of uh, uh, what the user is trying to do. And then the entity recognition, it is trying to find out for those words, the category of words, uh, similar to a name of a particular product or a place, the address, the phone, zip code, whichever information that the bot is designed to look for, okay, and process. Then it also searches for subjects, verbs, ob uh, objects, common phrases, nouns, so that it could find the related phrase and understand more what the user is intending to do. So let's also understand this with a quick example and learn a little few terminologies so that uh, we are familiar because I'm going to use all of these terminologies in the later part. Okay, so this is an example. What I'm trying to do here is let us say I'm interacting with a bot which uh, which is uh, helping me with the uh, airline booking and I want to book tickets from Mumbai to London okay and this is my input so this entire sentence is called as an utterance okay and then uh, the bot is trying to uh, figure out what is the intent so what is the intent here booking tickets is the intent of the user and it also extracts the entities. Mumbai and London are the entities, okay? So I have everything that I want to have now, okay? And uh, if I have to have an analogy to understand it better, what is trying to understand what is the method do I need to call? And what are the parameters that method is looking for? Do I get all of these parameters from this uh, sentence or not, okay? So think of it that um, if you compare it to a method, a uh, book ticket might be the method taking two parameters, source and destination. This is what it is trying to extract. And uh, yes, it gets what it is needed. So what do you think? How should uh, you know we be testing this? How should we strategize testing around this, right? So now I welcome to all you uh, to the session where I'm going to discuss exactly uh, this where I'm going to talk about how do I strategize 
using Botium, how Botium is going to help me in testing all of these uh, conversational AIs, how we can automate, and then also how we can determine whether this a specific piece, uh, the uh, build can be taken to production or not. So I'll take a minute to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shama, and I'm working with ThoughtWorks as a senior QA consultant. And uh, I'm passionate about testing and working on the solutions and strategizing things around testing. And as part of my QA journey, I got an opportunity to work and strategize testing on a chatbot app. And that is what I am here to share my experience and learning with you all today. And I hope it is going to help you to get started. I'll keep it pretty simple. OK, so let's straight away begin. So what is Botium? So Botium is open source tools, and it is a set of tools which uh, helps us to train bots as well as NLPs. And we'll see that in a minute. Um, here, this is a nutshell uh, where we see the components of Botium. Uh, there is Botium Core. Botium Core specifically have you know uh, you know uh, helps you with uh, connecting to platforms like where is your bot uh, available? Whether it is Skype, Slack, Telegram, Web, WhatsApp. Okay, these are all platforms it supports. It has connectors. Uh, to help with various uh, NLP engines like Dialogflow, IBM Watson, um, Microsoft Cruise, and so on. There are tons of them. And then it also uh, has a CLI, which is, we call it as Botium CLI. It is a command line tool to work with all the components that I just mentioned and to run tests and uh, you know generate reports. It also has uh, various test runners like Mocha, Jasmine, Jest, and so on. It also has a, a Component, a UI component where you can exactly do the same thing that we are doing with uh, writing scripts and uh, running it from the terminal and CLI. You can do the same thing on UI component. It is called as Botium Box. We will see that in a minute. And here is where I'm going to do a demo. Uh, yes. So. This is my directory where I have all my test cases. Okay. And I'm quickly going to use a Botian CLI and run. Uh, Mocha is just a test runner, which is going to help me to run and generate the reports. Let's start running. And in this case, I'm running it on Chrome. And let me tell you, this is not going to pop up any browser. It is going to run on the headless mode. If you see the first test case has already started, what was the first test case? It was about the account balance check. Okay, we will see that in a minute, what I'm doing. I'm sure everyone is confused, have no clue what exactly I'm doing, but we'll have a look in a minute, okay? So while this is you know, running a couple of tests for me, I'll quickly show you which I already ran and I have certain reports, okay? So these are the tons of test cases that I uh, ran, and I see two test cases are failing. If I look at the first, it says uh, transfer money to savings account regression failed, and uh, bot response, uh, I, the user says $500 to be transferred to my saving account, um, and expected to match was all right. So you're transferring amount that is $500, it will be replaced from your account the account number was replaced or uh, from an account to is that right but it failed it says that was what it was expected but it the bot says sure transfer from which account so it does not have the account information so something went wrong we'll have to see why did that happen right the second test case fails uh, where the user is trying to get a picture and the bot did not understand it and it responded something else and i was the user was expecting something else all the other test cases seem to be passing okay so what happened okay confused not sure what i did no problem um we we'll just deep dive into everything that i did and let's see uh, what i ran how did i how did it work and how we can achieve this with any of the bot right so how does the setup look like it is a node application so you have to have node installed on your machine and then uh, once you have node you have to install 
um, Botium CLI, and this is the command you can see on the screen. Then you do Botium CLI init. This is going to initialize the project, and it is going to add two files. One is botium.json, and then the second one is the Convo file. Um, and then the third line is going to run your test cases that you have written, and it is going to display beautiful reports for you, which you can use it to analyze further. But then let's have a look at what are the configuration files doing. What is this botium.json file and what is its importance? So uh, if I have to compare it, uh, it is like, you know, if I have to run my test cases on a particular browser using Selenium or APM, if I have to run it on a particular device, um, I need to give capabilities. And based on the capabilities is what it understands, how, where should it connect to and where the text needs to be executed on, right? The similar way, bottom.json file, I am going to uh, describe in what context a bot runs, where should it run, what bot it should connect, and how it should connect, what is the platform that I want to run it on, okay? And the next set of files are convo files. These are your test cases. So let's then see how do I write these test cases, okay? I can write test cases in simple text notepad, okay? Uh, I don't need any idea or anything to do that. I can, if I love programming, I can write it in JavaScript. I can, if I uh, am very much habituated to using Excel sheets and I'm comfortable using Excel sheets, you can use Excel sheet or a CSV file. So let's see how a text, I mean, how does a test case look like? Uh, before this example, I'll also show you quickly uh, these are my, I mean, just an example of a bottom file. So if you see, this is capabilities. These are just your desirable capabilities. Sorry, desired capabilities. Uh, project name, container mode, dialog for project ID, client email, private key, user uh, use intent, right? So where do I get this information from? You can, um, you know, you can check. Uh, with your developers, they can help you with this project ID, client email, and private keys. If not, uh, I am going to add a link to my references where you can refer to that link and see how, how exactly you can uh, capture these details for your uh, dialogue flow agent. Okay. And uh, I will also share uh, how do I write a test case. So this is a sample test case where I'm just greeting my bot. Okay, the first line is the name of the file. You see, this is just a text file on notepad. I've written this. And the second line is describing what is this test case name, TC01 greeting. This is just a test case name. Okay, and this will help you in reporting. Uh, line number three, hash me. And then line number four is hi. So everything that is followed after hash me is an input given to the bot. Okay, so this is the user's input. And then the all the sentences or all the utterances, now that we know the terminologies, uh, followed by hash bot is going to be what you're expecting out of the bot. Okay, so in this test case, uh, the user says hi and expected to hear back from bot. Hello, good morning, how can I help you? Okay, so just give it a thought. If I run this test case on my CI CD pipeline for every build. Will this test case pass every time? Uh, hopefully not, because uh, if I uh, run the build in the morning, it is going to say good morning. And in the afternoon, I might want to hear good afternoon, evening, and so on, right? So this text is going to fail, and uh, my test case would be marked as failed, but that is not the failure. Right? How can I fix this? So in this case, what I'll do, I'll use something called as an utterance file, and I can put all my utterances, okay, in that file, and use that utterance file as an input uh, from the user as well as uh, for the bot, okay? What this does is every single uh, utterance that is placed in the file will be replaced, okay? And uh, same goes with the bot. In this case, there are three inputs in my hello utterance file. Hello, hi, and hey too. 
and the expectation is still hello good morning how how can i help you right what is this doing is in if i have to compare and give the analogy with selenium these are my data sets and these are this is how i can parameterize a test case i have three different uh, test inputs and i want to run the same test case with three different inputs so these are three test cases and expectation these you can think this line from bot as an assertion so this is completely a hard assertion okay how can i even fix this more i'll show you an example um i have an example of uh, a payment due uh, date input this is an utterance file and the bot also has an utterance file what uh, input shows okay these are different utterances i want to use payment due date input is the name of the file the line number 2 says when is my payment due on my card uh, when is the payment due check due date for the payment on my card and all of these utterances i can place all of these utterances and in the expected output is what i can list on all the expected output uh i can just paste and put another i can say it is okay so what my bot does is it says okay fine for line number 2 this is my input run this test case user gives this input when is the payment due on my card and it looks for any of the matching responses for, uh, from this file so that way i can give all the various kind of different responses my bot can give okay clear so just to summarize my utterance file in me section is going to represent data sets and it is uh, similar to our parameterization and the utterance file if i place in my bot section uh, it is going to look for the responses which may match uh, for any of the inputs that i have given in that utterance file okay so let's move further the next is uh, how do i um, interact with the user interface elements like if you see some of the bots will give you certain links or uh, ask you to click on those links or buttons so that you could choose between options and uh, you know also certain media files pictures emojis any of that so how do you test this again in me section uh, i will say send me a uh, to uh, you know small pizza or anything uh, the bot returns me uh, with buttons and the name of the buttons would be kids normal family okay and the media it will also give me the picture of those uh, pieces so how do i choose a particular button or how do i click on that media a link or a, a image i may use the keyword like link button okay and give the name of the button so this is going to help me to um, you know interact with any of the user elements that my bot is giving in the next example um, i have uh, tested for particular um, you know scenarios but now i want to run end to end conversations like let us say that the intent of the user is uh, to transfer the money from account a to account b or check the balance or check the uh, due date of the payments i want to have that conversation end to end and i'll have those conversation files okay the next step is uh, i want to run them or different setup like i want to run it across slack skype or uh, whatsapp web and i want to maybe if i'm supporting um multiple browser engines i want to run it for dialog flow i want to run it for ibm watson just an example right so how do i do that i write again a bottom files and i can run it either i can set it up local i can set up a local grid and in the previous example that we saw it was a local grid that i ran on or i can also use cloud infrastructure like browser stack source lab and i can give my uh, you know my credentials there i am just going to share one of the sample file for local this is my local okay where i give what connect uh, connector i want to run in this case it is webdriver io because i want to run my test case uh, against a bot which is running uh, as part of my application web application on maybe i want to run it across uh desktop i want to run it across mobile devices how do i do that uh there is another example i can show uh, if i want to give particular device combinations uh i want in this case i'm running it on samsung galaxy uh s6 
and I can go on putting n number of uh, uh, you know capabilities here. So it is going to run on all of those devices. So this is how I can just write my uh, test cases in text file, and then uh, write my configuration file in bottom.json uh, file, and that's it. I don't need to really write any code. Okay. Switching back. So what's next? Right, so I have uh, my tests in place, my CDI, CI, CD pipeline is in place. I run my test on every build, but how do I make a decision that should I take this build and uh, ship it to production or not? Okay, uh, I'll have to, you know, uh, I'll have to also consider uh, the models are self learning, okay, because of which the test cases that I'm running may fail for various reasons. So I should have a good check in place and I should have a, a way where I can still analyze my test case and determine whether uh, this is the, an improvement or this is an actual failure, right? And how do I validate these fa failures? So let's take an analogy again. Let us say, okay, I am training my three-year-old boy on... Uh, uh, to learn two English alphabets, A for apple and B for ball. So I use these images and teach him, okay? I train him for a week, okay? And he learned. He says, I'm okay. Now, time to test. I'm going to test. I'll ask, hey, son, what is this? So he says, mama, this is an apple, right? I say, what? Apple? No, this is not an apple. Okay, let me check if he recognizes at least apple correctly or not. What is this? He says, sorry, I don't understand what is this. I don't know. So probably what is the problem? Where is the problem? I taught him for a week. He learned. He said, yes, I learned. I know A for apple, B for ball. But what happened when I asked him? I gave a picture of a ball. I asked him, what is this? A picture of an apple. He's not able to understand. So where is the problem? Is it about his learning abilities or memorization? Or it is, I, you know, I really have to improve on my teaching skills. The problem is with my teaching skills, nothing to do with him. So something needs to be improved for sure, right? So what is that? Of course, it is my mistake in this case. I did not train him enough with different pictures and he learned just red circle as an apple and uh, nothing else. So I'll have to fix this. So what I'll do to fix this is I'm going to collect varieties, different variety of data and more and more samples. So he understands how to identify an apple and how to identify a ball, correct? So your bot is just intelligent uh, as only as the underlying DB, okay? So it is not going to do something out of the box for you. So data matters a lot, right? So Let's see how I can define such matrices which can actually direct me to the right path. Should I improve on my training or should I uh, look back at the model and see it is something doing something wrong, it has learned something wrong. How do I do that? Confusion matrix, right? It looks very confusing. So let's see what it is. So the rows here are going to uh, tell you the predicted values by the board whether uh, if I say I want to book a ticket, whether it predicted it correctly or not. And the columns are what is the actual, uh, you know, uh, expected output. Uh, book ticket should say the intent is booking tickets, right? Not hello, right? So these, if you see it is something like true positives, false positives, true negatives, uh, uh, quickly I'll run through. It might be confusing in the moment, but it is just going to classify, uh, you know, correct and incorrect predictions and also tell me what are the error types. Uh, like uh, it will tell me if uh, the, the, the true positives is going to tell me whether it was predicted correctly and uh, true negatives is going to tell me it predicted correctly as not booking it. And then uh, false positive is going to tell me it incorrectly identified something uh, as a booking ticket intent and false negatives is predicting it incorrectly as not uh, you know booking so we'll see an example it is pretty confusing i know because even i took a lot of time when i was learning these things and these are a couple of more matrices that we actually 
um, you know, calculate based on the confusion matrix. So the first is I'll, um, you know, uh, get the confusion matrix. I'll look at the confusion matrix. How does it look like? And then the next is we are going to look at these matrices. Uh, accuracy is just going to tell me out of all the classes, how many were predicted correctly. Precision out of all the positive classes, how many were correctly identified. Recall is just going to tell me uh, out of all positive classes, how much did we predict correctly? And it should be as much as po high as possible. There's a slight difference in these, all of these, if you see the formula here. And F major is going to uh, you know, help me with uh, a recall and the precision at the same time, giving the harmonic mean instead of the arithmetic means. But don't worry, you do not have to sit and calculate all of this. Uh, we'll see how can be this done. And we'll also see a small example Okay, I've collected certain uh, runs and I have uh, collected a good, nicely looking, uh, uh, you know, um, results and also ugly looking results. Let's see. And this is going to be continuous process for you. Every build, just the way you do the build sign off and look at various matrices even today. Okay, so let's quickly jump and see something. Okay, here I go. Okay, so this is bottom box that I was talking about the UI component. I just wanted to make sure that we have a UI where we can visualize things. So I'm for this demo, I'm using bottom box. Uh, you could see everything that we did, uh, the bottom.json uh, file that we wrote. Uh, I don't need to do that. I can simply, you know, um, generate those files and drop in here. It we can connect through chatbots, any of the bot technologies. It has a lot of bot technologies. Let me show you quickly. Uh, you might be wondering if it only has samples. No, it is supporting your Alexa, Dialogflow, you know, BotPress, Rasa, IBM Watts, and so on. So you can choose between them. You can set all your device live, what all devices you want to run it against. You can go to settings and also connect to your providers. Okay. And you can write all the test cases and save your test cases here in text format. You can also connect to uh, get get and uh, pull your test cases, and you can view all the results here. So yesterday I was running a couple of samples, and let us first see a very good sample. Okay, how does actually confusion matrix look like? Um, let us see this example. Okay, I'll explain you. So uh, if you remember, uh, the rows are going to tell me. Um, what it predicted and the columns what it was supposed to predict okay so uh, these are the intents like ask time okay ask time had 43 intents in my test and it correctly identified all of the 43 against ask time only okay so if you see any um, confusion matrix as this diagonal thing and everything green that means it have the model has predicted all your intents accurately there is no fouls okay and if you look at these uh, banking account balance check, there were 23 utterances and all the 23 utterances were found and uh, identified predicted correctly by the model. So this is all good, okay. I can also see the numbers that we were uh, talking about here. Uh, see, the F1 score, precision recall, accuracy, uh, everything is fine, okay. It's all one, right. So nothing looks bad here. My confusion matrix look good. My, you know, matrices look good. And I want to also see, are there any risks? So yes, this is something in red. Shama, we... Sure. Yeah, sure, Pooja. And if I want to, you know, quickly click on one and go and see what are these. So these are my intents, so these are my prediction confidence. And I, um, you know, I recommend that you should have at least 15 to 20 utterances for each intent you're trying to test so that it would give you better results in terms of training. So you can have a look on all of these and uh, take a call. Do you want to uh, improve upon training or not? And now let us see a really ugly results. I want to show that as well. How does it look like? Because that is what is more important to understand. Here is the confusion matrix. You see this outliers? 
So what does it mean? How do I read this? So banking account earning check. Okay. So they were 15 intents. 13 were identified correctly. But then there was one intent which was incorrectly identified as part of banking account balance check. And there was another, uh, you know, um, utterance identified incorrectly uh, as ask what's possible. So something went wrong here. We might want to look at the training data. That means I'll have to work on my data and also look at my accuracy and predictions. How does it look like? I go to this section and I look at these. These are pretty low. F1 score is pretty low. Recall accuracy is pretty, pretty, pretty low. So that means I really have to work on my model. Okay. So this was just an example. Uh, and uh, after this, I just want to summarize what all we've learned. Uh, we, uh, you know, um, we'll have to do manual testing for sure. When I say manual testing, test case writing is what is important. And how do we write test cases to make sure I cover all the parts? We'll have to write test cases around different seven categories. Personality, um, does it have a name or does it introduce itself and uh, tells the user about its capabilities and so that the user knows what and how can be interacted with the bot. Intelligence, how does it handle multi-level or multi-step conversations? Because if you remember, I do not have a UI. I can give my source first the dates later, the number of tickets, you know, multi-level, uh, multi-step conversations. Also, the addresses can be of uh, pin code I can give first, and then I can tell my area, then I'll tell my building name and so on. How does the bot understand this? Write the test cases around. Uh, error management, if the bot is not designed to do something, if I go and ask Poncho about uh, give me the movie ratings for a particular movie, it does not understand because it is not designed to do that. How does it handle it gracefully? And understanding different utterances, emojis, media. So you'll have to have a bunch of test cases on that side. Also, you'll have to test speed and accuracy. Accuracy matters a lot. Uh, remember that Selenium has two different meanings in based on the context, right? Selenium for a chemist means completely different. And for an IT person means completely different. So in context, it has to understand what I'm talking about. Speed. Uh, on UI, I get that loader, but uh, in bot, it has to make sure I understand it is processing and it is going to get back to me rather than keeping silent. And then navigation uh, in UI, I can go back to the previous menu and uh, you know make some changes and come back. In bot, you do not have that. So if I have to go back to the previous conversation, I say I want to book tickets. Then I say, hey, hold on. I want to also check on train tickets, not air tickets. So does it understand that it goes back and switches between train tickets and book, uh, airline tickets, or does it give you the later one, right? So these are all kind of test cases that you have to come up with. Uh, you can also have a lot of data sets readily available um, so that you could use those data sets for banking, retail, uh, healthcare, and so on, and uh, utilize that in your testing strategies and write more specific uh, tests uh, across your uh, uh, your application and the use cases that you have very specific to your application as well. And uh, also uh, the next thing that we um, also have to do is automation testing. We saw bottom, we can have all of these test cases that you have written in text. You can use the similar same test cases and put it on bottom. It runs seamlessly, we saw that. And uh, the next step is doing the analysis of the matrices. We saw that as well. Uh, what are the uh, actual matrices that I need to capture and how can I do the decision making? And then the last thing is crowd testing. Uh, crowd testing is important to actually, um, you know, uh, help you with uh, hand picking people with different age, gender, profession, just to make sure that you collect a variety of ways so that uh, you could see how your uh, bot is performing and you could uh, get uh, you know real time uh, data as well and more utterances for your training and that you can use uh, for your bot. And also it will cover uh, different markets and locations. Uh, so that is an added advantage. And do not forget your roots. 
API testing, performance testing, security testing, database testing, and all of the testing that we are doing today is still applies for all the boards. It is just about there is an NLP sitting in between, but it is still interacting with various endpoints, services, databases, and whatnot. So make sure you also have these test cases. If you remember uh, the CNN bot, right? It did its job, it understood, it's all good, but somewhere in the back end, the integration may must have failed to process that, and that's the reason it is still giving you the alerts. So I'll just you know stop here, and I'm done. I hope it was uh, helpful for you people. You can get started with testing any of the NLPs if you have projects.